Hi everyone, it is Lauren and I am here live. Make sure I see the video so I can check in with you guys. While I'm here, I want to make sure, yep, there it is. Okay, so you may see that uh, my setup here is a little bit different today. <laughs> And you will see why as we go on today with our live video. But I had a piece that I made, a little project. Um, so you probably picked it up from my post today. Hi, Debbie! Um, I am working with snowflakes. Quote, unquote, <laughs> snowflakes. Um, for this time of the year. Hi, Andrea! Um, and so I decided to take two of our slotted flower stampings and I colorized them to resemble a snowflake. So um, I'm going to show you what I used. Hi, Debbie! Thanks for joining! Um, so let me show you the pieces here quickly. So these are the unfinished pieces. I, it's hard to see a little bit. Let me bring it up. But I used two pieces. I layered them. So I'm going to show you. So these are the two pieces. And I'm sorry about the band-aid, guys. <sighs> My fingernail broke super low, so. <laughs> hey, beans! You made it! So these are the two pieces that I used to layer. So I kind of, this one is real malleable. You can kind of move the petals there. As you can see, I'll try to do it slower so you guys can see how they move. So I kind of, these kind of go up like this, but I wanted it to sit flatter. So I just kind of pushed them down a little bit with my fingers. But what I use, so the measurements on these pieces, this one, the big one, this is 62 millimeters. And then this little dapped one is 25. So um, I have other options to show you guys too if you want to use something different. But, so this is going to be turned into a brooch if you picked up on that clue on that hint in my post as well so i still have to glue the pin back to the back of this but um i'm hoping i can kind of get you can kind of see that little bit of glitter on there i did add some glitter on this kind of pick that up a little bit so I used several things <laughs> to make my look. So the first thing I did, Colleen, you made it, yay. So the first thing that I used was our Lumiere paint. And this is the white, pearlescent white. You see the glitter, Debbie? Okay, good. Okay, so I did this first, and I kind of let that sit, let it dry, and then I actually took some, sorry, I'm bumping the tripod there. I used some UV resin, and I just kind of took like a Q-tip or just something real small, like one of those little applicators that I've been showing you guys that I, I've been using for the... Perfect Pearls. Hi, Pamela, yay! I'm glad you made it for the live. Um, I just kind of took the resin and I just squirted it a little bit out on my applicator. And I just kind of slowly just kind of dragged it across here. And then I took some glitter that you get. Okay, so we all have mermaid sand, right? And some of the mermaid sand has all of that beautiful glitter that is found in the bottom of our bags left over in our mermaid sand. So I took one of my bags of mermaid sand that had 
glitter in it and I took some of the glitter and then I just took my finger and I just kind of went like this over the top and just kind of scattered it, kind of sprinkled it over top of my stamping. So then it would adhere with that UV resin in the UV resin just to kind of give that slight little shimmer that we know snowflakes have in the, in the sunlight when it, the sunlight hits it and it gets that just little bit of shimmerness. Hi, Karen. So I did that and then I went over it to harden it with that handy dandy flashlight, the UV flashlight that I showed you guys last week that is awesome. So I just kind of used that because I used like just the teeniest amount of resin. So that helped harden it real good. And then just for my liking personally, I thought it was looking just slightly a bit too silver and I wanted it to have some more white. So I actually, today then, after it was you know, sat for like 24 hours. I took the white paint pen that comes in that pack that I showed you guys the other week as well. It comes in the gold, silver, and the white. I took the metallic paint pen and I just went over the stamping in certain places with that white paint pen to make it look more like actual snow. And then it is riveted. Miss B. Sue helped me out and she riveted my piece for me. And so we are going to show you how you can do this yourself with the riveting. Hi, Miss Gloria. Margie, hi. Glad you made it. So I have the pieces ready. So I'm going to get this set up in there. So we have little tiny bench block here. And then these are the pieces, the two pieces that I showed you that I used. And I kind of angled it a little bit just okay let me flatten that out a little bit more all right okay so miss b sue if you think you're ready well, all right we'll let you do a little demo for us on how we get joanne hi you join us just in time to see B. Sue help us mm -hmm. rivet. <laughs> uh, trying to squeeze in here. You aren't as much smaller than me. <laughs> okay. So, anyway, yeah, I've done videos on this, guys, but it's a long time ago. It's probably time to do another one. Yeah, I was afraid to rivet as well, Debbie. So I have not done this yet. So this is good for me too. I'm excited. It's so easy. You're not going to believe it. Any of you guys scrapbookers? Any of you guys are scrapbookers? You're used, you're used to... I didn't mean scrapbookers. I meant scrapbookers. <laughs> book. 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 Anyway, <laughs> scrapbookers use eyelets. And I love eyelet rivets. I'm going to have to move this just a little bit more because i got to get my sure. leg in here to stabilize this. That's right, Beans. I, I use eyelet rivet rivets. <laughs> I use eyelet rivets because I like to have the uh, possibility of being able to come back up through. Whereas if you use a regular flat haired rivet, it's just flat head. You can't do anything else except maybe glue something on it or whatever. But I like to leave myself options. So <clears throat> what I do is I get my little ribbon. I don't know if this is going to be something you guys can see. Let me get this. Here, maybe. Can zoom in There's a bit. little hole in this. This is a 332 size. I always buy those because the holes that are in brass stampings, the ones we carry in the site, are almost always 332. So it's an assured fit, okay? And then I get quarter length, which means one-fourth of an inch length, because then you can put two 
together. If you want to put more than that together, we do have, um, no, this is a one fifth. I'm sorry. This is one fifth inch. The, the one quarter inches, you can put three together usually, but I like just doing two. Let me hold this where you can see it. I like just doing two. So that's me. But as you get braver in the eyelet world, you'll be finding you can do this all kinds of things. That's right, Beans. You can let out some stress with these hammers when you're hammering. Well, you don't want to let out too much stress because it's a particular way you want to do this. you got to go easy. So you're not going to be whacking on this. But anyway, so I've got it set up. The little, the little rolled hole on the end. This one. Well, oh, come here. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye bye. That's Rob. Bye bye. This Rob says that. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Sweeper will find it. I was okay. Like, see you yeah. Real quick, the, but... the thing about these rivets is they don't cost much, so that's all good. Okay. So you can see here, my hands look bad. I feel too. like I'm it's, playing. It's at winter home. time and things are getting dry and everything's getting cracked. But anyway, you have this rolled lip on the edge. Okay. Mold. Okay. So you're going to set this down on your steel bench block. And let me just stress a little something with you. If you think that you're going to just take this and put it on a countertop and do it, or on a piece of wood or something, think again. Number one, it doesn't work. Number two, you're going to damage your countertop or your piece of wood or whatever it is you're whacking on. You've got to have a steel bench block. This is the one, it's, it's got this little... This mess up because I've been using this for years. This is out of my workshop, okay? Mm -hmm. um, we usually have this size and sell. Right now we have one that's a little bit smaller that Impress Art makes. So if you look this up on the website, you'll see this one. But what we have is actually the Impress Arts and it's kind of a stopgap thing. But it's very small and it works just beautiful. It's just perfect. But we do have something for you now. But it's about I'm, two inches. Yeah, I reordered this. Now this, oh, to tell you, you know, before I get, I'm getting ahead of myself. This right here is a cushion that I like to put down underneath. It's made especially for the bench block. Um, I order them sometimes because you don't have to have them. And you don't want to get more money in this stuff than, than you have to, you know. It's nice to have one of these little things. It just, it kind of makes it easier on your hands and stuff, you know, when you're whacking on it and everything. Hi, Hobby! So anyway, so what I'm going to do is I've got the, the skinny end up with the hole, the rolled edge down, right on the block. Now, I do this from the back, meaning since I want this to be on the front, let me come back on camera, I'm so bad at that. Since I want this to be on the front, this one goes down first. And what I'm going to do, since this is malleable, to make it easier for me, because you can always bend it back, um, I'm going to put that right down on there. Okay, so you see it's threaded up through. Okay, so now I'm going to put this one on top because this one needs to be on the back when I turn it over. So I'm just going to kind of look and see, you know, where I want it positioned. you got to check it out, make sure where you want it positioned so that, you know, when you put it together, it's not all off. Although usually you can fix it. But now there's two ways to do it. I do, when I do it, I don't use a setter. But I've been using, I've been doing this a lot. And I still goof them up too. I just don't like using a setter. But if you're going to do without the setter, which we don't have in stock right now. They're on the way. Um, ball peen hammer. You see that? These are also not in stock. They're on the way. We don't sell a ton of hammers, but I usually try to carry some. Um, the ball peen end, this here. This rounded end, see? That's what I'm going to use at first. And I'm just going to tamp, tap, 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 easy. Tappity tap. Because if I go whacking on this too hard, I'll blow it out in such a way that the hole will be gone. And for that, I might as well use the flathead rivet. So it's starting to, if, I don't think you see it because it's minuscule, but the edge is starting to flare out. This will just kind of slowly and carefully just kind of bounce on it this is easy on your arm and your hands so if you start banging on stuff like the people who forge and stuff sometimes you get into trouble with your muscles like that also be careful you don't hit yourself but when you're going slow and easy like this even if you do it's not going to hurt too bad yeah i got this almost all the way down all right this came out good yeah so all right 
Can you see that? Let me get my little pointer thing out. Can you see that? I've got my hole still in there. I can still get my pointer through. You know, it's blown out. Now, if I didn't want it blown out, like smushed out that so much, flared out like this so much, then what I would do is use my rivet setter. That's what this is. Okay. If you have a big enough rivet, then you can use this in. But I use these little itty bitty rivets, so that doesn't work so good. So then I just put this on it, on top, and I just tamp on it. Maybe I just give it a couple little tamps with the flat end now, just because I can. Okay, now here's something weird I've thought about. If you whack on this too hard, you can actually loosen it. No kidding, you can. So you don't want to do that. All right, but you can see how nice and down it is. This is not turning much at all. You could turn this if you want to. Like if this is not in the right position, you could turn it. You probably take uh, your little pointer tool and get it to move. Not too easy though, because I got this you tight. You got that tight. I got it tight. It's yeah. tight. But you see, you did see that right there. I just moved it. Yeah. Okay. Part of the reason why it may be hard to move when you turn it around is because you know this is dapped up. So when you push this into it, then it's hitting on it and doesn't want to. So what you can do, too, if you want to put some dimension back into your piece, you can bend these right back up. But see now, did you see that? It moves easier now. Uh -huh. So what I'm going to have to do is maybe tap it's a little not, more. Yeah, it needs a little bit more help. So I'm going to take my rivet tool this time. Normally you wouldn't hammer on this nib, but I have to because the nib do doesn't hit and fit in the hole. <laughs> Debbie, it wasn't that easy? That was so easy. Now, I think this would be better to just take the ball peen and hit it. So do it gently so you don't mess up the nice rolled rivet for your finger. I told you, you know, you could actually lose it. That's all, nice and tight now. We can all just wear padded mittens the first time yeah. we do it. In case we hurt our fingers. Believe me, if I can do this and not hurt myself, <laughs> you can. You know, I, I'll be honest with you, and maybe some of you feel the same way. For a long time, I didn't learn to rivet. I was so envious that everybody else could drill holes and rivet. And I mean drill with a drill, not a hole punch. Not that there's anything wrong with doing a hole punch if you can. I would Hi, prefer Dara. Because I use a drill press, and that's a little bit more heavy duty. And if you don't hold it just right, you can drill yourself, and that's serious. And that's why you will never see me use my drill press in a video. Because I got my way, and people don't like it, and I don't want to hear about it. Period. The end. Um, so, you know, you, what I like is there's this little drill called a stylus drill. It's by Dremel. I don't even know if they make it anymore, but I've had two or three of them and I love them. And they just fit a woman's hand perfect. And you can just get down in there and just drill a hole. But anyway, you don't have to with these. I digress as usual <laughs> because you got holes in these. And that's, that's the lovely thing. You don't have to drill holes in so many of the parts I carry because they have holes already. Yay. Mm -hmm. But if you want to layer them and you don't want to glue them, glue them together, which if you can get away with gluing them together, go ahead. There's nothing wrong with it. But maybe you'd just like to take it another step to another level. Maybe there's an application where you think a rivet will look better, then fine. Now you can do it. It's so unbelievably easy. Yes, it was. Like I told you, if I can do it, <laughs> you can. The biggest thing about riveting is you have to have the right tools. And it's not, they're not... Oh, look at Javi's looking it all up for you. Isn't that sweet? Thank you, Javi. Javi's on the spot, even though she's not doing the video. She's right on the spot. <laughs> Bless her heart. Um, anyway, sometimes Miss Gloria does that too, huh? Yeah. Um, anyway, what I wanted to tell you, now I forgot. Oh, you got to have the right tools, okay? So, like I told you when I first started, you have to have this chunk of steel here. You have to have this steel steel bench block, okay? Or a little mini anvil, which I have one of those too. Let me just go up here. And I don't think I have any of these in stock right now either, but I'm going to get some because I'm in the middle of making an order. Let me pull this down. See? little anvil sometimes comes in handy. You have this little 
rounded edge like if you're doing a ring or something you know whatever I mean I am not a metal worker I I started out learning and then I just went mixed media and kind of stayed there and so I'm not the biggest font of knowledge when it comes to this stuff but this is one thing I can do okay so and I do it a lot I drill a lot you know I make holes a lot you know that kind of I run a torch and make patina I know how to solder, but I don't do it because for what I want to do, I don't have to. So, I don't know if that's a good excuse or not. If you want to solder, Harry has a great tutorial on our website. You can find it, and I can give you that link sometime. But we're talking about riveting right now, and as you can see, as benchwork stuff goes, riveting is about as easy as it gets. Yeah, that was beyond easy. It's too, too, too silly easy. So let me just show you, like, in review, one little couple things to keep in mind. And then um, this video we'll put over at the group, and it'll be on the Beast of Boutiques page housed there, too. And we've been talking about putting them up on YouTube when we're done, too. Maybe Javi will have to. Javi's been really crunch. She's had a lot of extra on her lately, so I don't know when she could do it, but maybe she could take some of these last few videos that Lauren did, because she had some very worthy projects that you'd probably like to look at again. But anyway, just remember, I'm going to put it on here so I don't... Yeah, Zara, if you're able to uh, hit the replay after this is posted, you'll yeah. see Bisu demonstrated riveting for us. Yeah, and, and you'll have to let it process first, because it might take 10 minutes or something for you to see. But here's the, has, here's the rivet. I'm going to pull it up so you can see. Yep. I just poked through it so you can see. This is the side that you want to show on top. See right there? This little rolled edge. So what you do, so that will happen, is you have to put it down onto the metal first. And then you have your little shaft up. It's, it's one-fifth of an inch. That's the size that I prefer. 332, one-fifth. That's what we have on the website. We have some one quarter too. Oh, good. You can do rivets. So I have never done them, and a few other people haven't, and so we've been wanting to see how yeah, it's done. Yeah, I just want to <laughs> stress to you that it's super, super simple. You have to have the right equipment. You've got to have a steel bench block or a little anvil. Got to. And I found that a chasing hammer works the best for me. That's this kind of hammer. It's got, let me pull it back. Is, this one's real flat. The flat. one I have that are coming in are slightly domed and I prefer them. I'm this is an old old one that I had for a long time. And then with the ball peen edge. If you have a ball peen hammer, say your husband has one or something on a garage, and it fits your hand right and you like it, you could use it for this. I just prefer it because you get you can flatten with this, you can round it with this. It's just that very, very easy bouncing action on there so that you don't like make a crush. You could flip it over onto the side and make a crush. You could close the hole. There you can get the rivet out if it goes astray. Maybe one day I'll show you that, but it's not fun. But you can get it out. But just don't worry about that. Just be sure you get a steel bench block. Get a ball peen hammer. This is a little nib on it, ball. That's what they call that. You want to get that. Um and then if you get this little Yes, Debbie, the hammers are on their way. Yeah, they're on the way. Um, and also the riveting... Um, this thing. This thing. Yeah, this comes the in. Riveter the riveter. This thing. Set. set. You know, I don't use this much. But when I want to use it, I need it now. Okay? It comes... I'll show you how it comes. It comes with... with um, this one's got eyelets, but they're huge eyelets. That we would never use that size in jewelry making. I got them this time uh, with flathead rivets. So, I mean, I don't know if they'll fit, but whatever. Um, but it has this thing in there, and then there's something else that just fell, and I'm going to try and get it. And this is kind of cool. Do you see where it went? Uh, it's a little round thing. You see it? Yes. Okay. Now, this is kind of neat, too. That comes in that kit. Okay. Um, this is for setting rivets, too. And it's like a little mini anvil, they call it. And so you can set your rivets on this. And it works. It works pretty good. But when I use it, I find I don't just put it on, you know, here. I could. But it just doesn't feel as stabilized to me. So 
if I do use this, I find I, I put it on my steel bench block. So, you know, number one, you got to have this. You got to have this. <laughs> Dara says she loves the cute anvil. Yeah. He is kind of cute. They are real expensive, you know. I would say if you have no riveting equipment whatsoever, probably for... Hi, Susan! If you're just getting, like, the bench block and the ball-peen hammer and a handful of rivets and maybe this steel, the setter thing, that would be the most essential things to get. You'd probably be around 60 bucks, maybe. Which is a little bit, but then you're done. You really, unless you get into some kind of advanced metal work, you don't need anything else. You're done. I've had this for, like, 20 years, maybe never any need to buy another one i do have other ones because maybe i want a bigger one or a smaller one sometimes but yeah she has a bigger this one is, this the is the workshop. one that i use all the time this piece here you can get or not this pillow thing you can get it or not i don't know that i ordered any i can look into it because you know, it just adds money you know um if you have a nice place where you can bang away on it you know uh, you don't need that, but this does muffle sound. So if you're in a house, Hi, Jenny. Thanks somebody's for joining. watching TV in the next room or something, they don't want to hear it, then it helps with that. So anyway, you know, like I say, you don't get a ton of money into it. And once you buy it, you're not buying it again and again. Like jewelry parts, sometimes we run out and then we got to go buy more. You're done. When you buy this, you're done. That's all you need. So basically that's how it goes. And then too, what's so cute, like I, I manipulated this back up. You know, I have a cuff that I made out of this finding a long time ago using paint and iced enamels. I'm going to go look and see if I can find the picture and show you guys how it looks. But it's so cute. So, so stinking cute. So anyway, that's the deal on that. I'm going to put this away so I don't lose it because I might need it sometime. Colleen wants to know if you could just put a pot holder under the steel, under your like bench block. I like, would put... Like a crocheted one, maybe? Like a handmade, like a I would if, if you did a crocheted one, I would do two of them. If you were using a regular pot holder, I'd do three or four. Because that's equivalent, that would be equivalent to this. This is thick. This is thicker than you think. And it's very, very cushioned. But I don't see why that would not work. And then you don't have to buy it, you know. I have several. I like these. They're weighted. They've got like sand in them and stuff. They're weighted. Yeah, it's almost like a bean bag type. Yeah, and they're but heavier. Yeah, they just they're just I think they're the better thing. But you can always improvise. You want to spend the money. I think you'd be fine. But you're gonna need more than one. That's my opinion. Okay, I'm getting out of here because after all, this isn't my video. My video is <laughs> on Friday, right? But that's okay. So anyway, I'm gonna let. Lauren have her camera back and her spot back and she will show you the rest of whatever she was going to show. Did you have any new product to share? Yeah, I have a couple of things. Okay, so she's going to show you. We don't have tons of stuff coming in right now, but we do have some I nice have some things. older things, too, I that did I'm get. I did get a, a box of silverware, silver plate today, but it's not tons of stuff, but we'll see. So anyway, Thanks, it was Beans mostly you. charms. So, okay, I think I got Beans a squirrel. So now, guys... We have no excuse not to rivet. <laughs> Bisu just showed us how easy it was, so we have no excuse. <laughs> Hi, Kimberly. Thanks for joining. Okay, so this is the one that Bisu showed us how to do on camera. So make sure if you guys are just joining, if you missed the little demo that you go back after this is posted, watch the replay. So this is the one that she showed. This is mine. And she actually riveted it for me. Because <laughs> like I said, I have not riveted before. So she was helping me too. So this is the piece that I made. It's the same piece. I used the same flowers. Except I colorized mine. This is not home. Well, we can make it homework, Debbie, if you want to. We have to rivet a piece. <laughs> if you want to. Are you guys wanting homework? We can surely make it homework. And we can all play together then. Let me know. But this is my piece. So this is, like I said, exact same two pieces. And again, for those of you that joined, so I used several things to colorize this. So I'll show you briefly one more time. So first, I started with the Lumiere. 
This is the pearlescent white. So I did this first, started to let it dry. Then I went over with like a little Q-tip or a little uh, applicator. Thanks, Beans. And I took, okay, well, we can do homework, Deb. <laughs> Not a problem. We can have two weeks like we used to do. Give us two weeks and then we'll show off what we did. So I used some uh, UV resin and I just slowly just kind of squeezed it out and just put a little bit on the end of my applicators. And then I just kind of slowly, easily dragged it, carefully dragged it um, along the petals. And then I mentioned how we all have mermaid sand and they're gorgeous and they all have that beautiful kind of glitter at the bottom and we don't it's like what do we do with that beautiful glitter so I took some glitter from one of my mermaid sands and I just took my fingers and I just slowly kind of like what you do with salt when you're cooking and you just kind of slowly just add it and I just let it settle into the UV resin onto my piece because snowflakes when you see them in the sun or snow like clean snow fresh snow you know how it has that shimmery effect in the sunlight so I wanted to just kind of give it that little bit of shimmer I used that UV flashlight that I showed you guys last week how easy handy dandy that thing is because I didn't use very much resin just a teeny tiny bit and I just used that to harden my UV resin and then after I was looking at it, for my personal taste, it was looking just a little too silver for me. So I went back over it a little bit with our new paint pen and I used the white. So it's a three pack, our paint pens. It comes in gold, silver, and white are the three colors that you get. And I used the white I have it upside down here this is the pen here and I just took it and just added a little bit of the white over top in certain spots just so it kind of looked like snow and then I'm gonna try to move this a little bit in the camera and see if you guys can catch that glitter a little bit you can kind of see just a tiny bit how it has a, just a little bit of shimmer from the glitter yeah, this was actually my first time, Gloria, using the Lumiere's. Um, I really liked it. It's very easy to use. You just have to shake it really well before you use it. Goes on pretty nice. Um, you want to let it sit, of course, let it dry. Um, and then I did seal this. This is already sealed. Um, got that done. I used the Craylon and I used the satin um, on it. Because I wanted it to have just a teeny bit of maybe gloss, but not like over shiny. So, yeah, I used the Krylon spray to seal it. And I used the satin. So this is going to be turned into a brooch. Um, and I'm still debating if I want to add maybe some like uh, rhinestone, like some cup chain to add a little bit more bling. I know Gloria's probably going to say yes. <laughs> Her and I like the bling. <laughs> so, um, yeah, still trying to debate about that. But yes, I'm, I will be gluing a pin back to the back of this and this will be a brooch for like wearing on like a winter coat or on a sweater. So that's what this piece is gonna turn into. Hey, Sam. So, as I said, I have a couple other options. Joanne, yes, more bling. You could always, because too, because this is slotted, you could always dangle like some chain. You could hang some chain or do like a, or you could hang it like this. So it hangs with one of these slotted petals down and hang like a little briolette or a little bead or something if you wanted as well. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of, I'm weighing my options, trying to think if I want to do that or not. So yeah. Still slightly a work in progress, 
but the main part is done. <laughs> but I have other pieces to show you guys as options in case you want to use something a little different. So as I said, this is slightly bigger. This, this main piece is 62 millimeters. So if you want something maybe just slightly smaller, we also, or a different style, we have these eight petal flowers. Aw, oh, thanks, Joanne. <laughs> that you could use, again, have the drilled hole, so easy for riveting. So you could layer these. These also, you can manipulate a little bit. I'm gonna try to do that on camera so you guys can kind of see can see how these move a little bit so let me show you in comparison here size wise this is 49 millimeters um so it is smaller so this is the larger one <laughs> Gloria the eight petal so you can see here in my hand the difference in size. It is slightly smaller, so if you don't want something so big. And then here is the smaller one. I'll put it over top, and it is 33 millimeter. And this is the matching piece. Or you could do the slotted one that I used if you want it, if you want something that's a little bit different, if you don't want them to look both exactly the same. So there's another look for you for snowflake type effect if you wanted. We also have two other pieces. You could use them sing singularly, <laughs> see if I can get that word out, um, or you could put together. So this also has a hole as well. So you could also put these together if you wanted. I don't know if you like these together or not, but there's this piece. But I kind of like this piece as like an earring. This is a beading flower. This is a tea rose. But you can see you could hang from one of these little holes and make earrings. So if you don't want something super layered, so if you're still a little nervous about the whole riveting thing, but you kind of like the idea of like doing a snowflake or something, you could turn this little flower into a snowflake and just use a single layer. If you wanted these bend just a little bit so if you want to flatten this out right here in the middle you can just slightly but that's another option and this is 24 millimeters these are all sold by the piece too on our site by the way so there's that piece <clears throat> and then we also have this little flat filigree piece that kind of has a flower look kind of has a snowflake look you could again hang from the looped edged border you could make earrings if you wanted or you could maybe even use as a ring if you want to make like a snowflake ring you could do that Or you could even use it and connect on either side and make a bracelet. So versatile piece <clears throat> that you could use here. You could do the same thing actually with the other one as well. With this one, this one would work for a ring. Could also work as a bracelet as well because it has those little holes all around the edging but great pieces the raw brass is great for colorizing and then I just pulled a couple beads just to show you guys some options because if you want more bling if you want to dangle things so we have these which are beautiful these are jet black and silver fire polished check glass faceted beads. I love these. They're like black on one side, silver on the other, and it's like a metallic silver. 
you can see those flashes because of the faceting. These are five millimeters and you get 50 beads on a strand. Five, zero, 50. Yes, these are great little spacer beads. I love these things. Super sparkly. So here, I'll show you with the painted flower here. See if I can get those both in camera. So there's the jet black and the white. Isn't it pretty, Sam? So then, okay, so these are great, love these. We have these, which just came back. And we have these in several sizes. I just pulled the one size. They almost have a slightly labradorite look, but they are not labradorite. They are just check glass beads, but they have that matte kind of smoke gray. Hey, Jan. Um, that smoke gray and then an AB finish. And these are six millimeter and you get 50, five, zero, Again, yes, they glow just like Labradorite. That's that AB finish that you're seeing, but they kind of resemble Labradorite. They have that same kind of look to them. Um, but we also have these, hi Joyce. We also have these, this is a six millimeter. We also have four millimeter and we also have eight millimeter. So you can choose any of the sizes that you prefer. So four, six, and eight, all are in stock. This is the six millimeter. But they are super pretty. Um, they're prettier in person when you see them. I think sometimes because you see that glowing, you know? So sometimes you just need to see things on camera, in the light, in 3D. So yeah, these are absolutely gorgeous. So these are, I believe, believe these are showing in the what's back in stock section but yeah we have the four millimeter six millimeter which I have, I'm holding and then we have the eight millimeter so depending on your liking the ones that you prefer to use the most we got you covered yeah eight is really nice Debbie it's a good size I like using eight um, especially for like memory wire bracelets so it's a really good size. Also for necklaces, I like the eight millimeter. Like if you want to add beads within your chain, like kind of make your own beaded chain, I like the eight millimeter as well. But six are nice too. Six and eight. Aw, uh -huh, thanks Andrea. I'm, I'm just glad you guys enjoy. I appreciate the support. <laughs> so yeah, these are gorgeous. Like I said, so much prettier in person. So you will not be disappointed when you get these. And then lastly, okay, these are something that we've had for a while, um, but I decided to bring them back out just because I thought they were good for this time of year. Um, and I thought they were really pretty. They are rare. Um, they're vintage. These are little AB plastic beads. They are like bone shaped beads. And I thought they could um, resemble icicles. Like if you wanted to do kind of like a fringe style necklace or something. But these are little AB, like whitish. They're called chalk white AB. And these are vintage. You can see that iridescence on them. And you get a whole pack of these. I just pulled a few out just to show you guys. But look how cute these are. When I saw them, I totally thought icicles. Hi, Michelle. So, yes. 
so I could just see like a necklace kind of like a waterfall type or like a fringe style necklace and kind of just like you could do these um, at like different lengths like hanging them and making them look kind of like twinkle lights even or like icicles hanging I just thought that would be like a really cool idea but these are let's see 10 by 4 the size on these and you get 25 in the pack hi Andrea sorry I missed you earlier so but look at do you see that shimmer so let me put this back up with these try to get these in They're great for earrings too, to hang for earrings. If you want to use some chain and just like dangle them, like an icicle hanging or something. But you can see with the glitter, like it kind of has that same iridescence to it. But they're super pretty. And I think they get forgotten sometimes, but I think they're great for this time of the year. These little beads. And then let me show you real quick with this one. Those beads are so pretty. But yeah, so some great pieces there's more to choose from i'm sure you guys can find but those are just a few that i pulled um that i thought you guys might like so i hope you enjoyed our little demo so if you let me know you guys debbie wants to do homework <laughs> miss debbie uh wants to do riveting homework so if you guys want to do riveting homework we can all uh, pick out some stampings. It can be whatever you want. You just have to rivet something. And you don't have to colorize it either. You can just, you know, do what you want. Um, we just have to rivet. Because we saw how easy it was. Beast 2 showed us. We have no excuse if you go back and rewatch. Um, so uh, we can have the homework due in like two weeks. So, um, not when, not next Wednesday, but the following would be when we could post and show what we did for our homework. If we would like. So let me know. Yeah, your nay. I'm all for it. Debbie likes the homework. So let me know if you guys want to participate. Um, and then... Don't forget to, we just had the reveal for the December Motivation Muse boxes. They are gorgeous. I've seen the pieces. Perfect for this time of the year. Lots of AB and crystal and pretty blingy items. We've been packing up a lot of them. I saw a bunch of you have uh, snagged up yours so if you haven't make sure you go and pick one up you won't be sorry they are gorgeous they will go really nicely if you want to do snowflake jewelry or that kind of thing this could even make a really cute like hair accessory you know me and hair accessories <laughs> thinking outside the box here <laughs> okay sorry getting away from myself so um and then also it is Wednesday so make sure you post your tables. Yes, watch the replay. Um, we did a little demo. I talked about what I used for this piece and then Bisu actually demonstrated for us how to rivet, how simple it is. Because um, I have never done it myself either. I will, I will be honest, um, I was always scared. So she riveted my piece for me and then um, ahead of time and after I had it all done and she showed us how to actually rivet. 
So, so, so easy. Took like less than a minute. So, um, it is Wednesday though, so show us what you're doing, what's on your table. Make sure you use the hashtag um, so we know it is current and we can count you. We need 20 different individuals and then someone will win a gifty. Thank you again so much for watching. I really appreciate it, you guys. I, I know you guys are liking the project, so I hope I can keep them coming for you guys, the projects and the little demos. Um, makes it more enjoyable. So I will talk to you all soon. Thank you so much. Stay warm, stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you all next week. Bye, guys.